Hey, good morning, boys and girls. This is Miss Becky B. And I get to read to you Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, one of my favorite stories. And this is a different one than I have ever read before. And I wore my special Rudolph earrings for you that are probably older than you are so that I could read it this morning. This is by um, Robert L. May, and it's illustrated by David Wenzel, and it says the original, that means the very first story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So I hope you enjoy it today, and I hope you can understand Miss Becky B's nasally voice. So there's the title page that I'm sure Miss Michelle has taught you about in library. And then there is the page with the picture of poor old Rudolph on there. He's asleep in his bed, and you can see that little shiny nose snuggled up under his covers. Rudolph was always my favorite. And you guys don't know what it's like. See, when Miss Becky B was a little girl, we only got to see it one time a year. It came on one time, and if you missed it, you missed it. And it was usually on a Sunday night, so my grandmother, who was my favorite person in the whole world, she'd let me stay at her house, and I might be a little... <coughs> I'm sick so that I could stay at her house and not have to go to church that night to watch Rudolph, if you know what I mean. I always watched Rudolph because if you missed it, you missed it. So here's the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Twas the day before Christmas, and all through the hills, the reindeer were playing, enjoying their spills, while every so often they'd stop to call names at one little deer not allowed in their games. Now, that wasn't very nice to call names to their friends. I don't like it when people call me names, and I know you don't either. Ha ha! Look at Rudolph. His nose is a sight. It's red as a beet, twice as big, twice as bright. While Rudolph just cried, what else could he do? He knew that the things they were saying were true. Where most reindeer's noses were brownish and tiny, poor Rudolph's was red, very large, and quite shiny. Where most, oh my goodness, in daylight it sparkled. The picture shows that. And at daytime, at nighttime it glowed like the eyes of a cat. Look there, it looks like a little heart. And that's because Rudolph has so much love in his heart. And look at his eyes. He looks so sad. Nobody deserves to be called names, boys and girls. I hope you don't ever call anybody names. I'm sure you don't. Because there's only sweet boys and girls that go to Northview. I'm sure. Okay. Although he was lonesome, he always was good. Obeying his parents as good reindeer should. That's why on this day, Rudolph almost felt playful. He hoped that from Santa, soon driving his sleigh full of presents and candy and dollies and toys for good little animals, good girls and boys, he'd get just as much. And this is what pleased him as happier, handsomer reindeer who teased him. So as night and a fog hid the world like a hood, he went to bed hopeful. He knew he'd been good. See, he didn't have to worry. He didn't have to worry if he was on the naughty list because he was always good. And that's one thing, boys and girls, if you do what Dr. Ballou and Miss Hillard tells us every day, if you treat others the way you'd want to be treated, you don't have to worry about whether you've been bad or good because you know already every day. Look, there's Santa Claus. That's what I'm going to read about now. It says, while way, way north, while way, way up north on his same foggy night, old Santa was packing his sleigh for his flight. This fog, he called out, will be hard to get through. He shook his round head and his tummy shook too. Without any stars or a moon as our compass, that means something to guide him. This extra dark night is quite likely to swamp us. And he said, oh, my goodness, that would keep them from going somewhere. Oh, they needed something special to help them cut through that dark fog. To keep from a smash-up, we'll have to fly slow. To see where we're going, we'll have to fly low. And low and slow is not the way Santa's used to going. Oh, my. We'll steer by the street lamps and houses tonight in order to finish before it gets light. Just think how the boys and girls' hopes would be shaken if we didn't reach it before they awaken. Now, that just wouldn't do at all, would it, boys and girls, if the presents didn't get to their houses before they woke up? They'd be all disappointed. Would Santa want that? No. Okay, so here's Santa. He's getting his thoughts together. He's thinking. He's using his problem-solving skills and his thinking skills there, and he's thinking. And he says, Come, Dasher, come, Dancer, come, Prancer, come, Vixen, come, Comet, come, Cupid, come, Donner, come, Blitzen. 
Be quick with your suppers. Get hitched in a hurry. You too will find fog a delay and a worry. So he's worried. He's thinking, uh-oh, these deer better hurry up and eat their supper or we're not going to make it. So deer don't have fog lights, do they? Like cars have fog lights, deer don't have them. Okay, so here is Santa, and he's thinking, and he's worried. This is the page I'm going to read you, but I'm going to show you this one. And Santa was right, as he usually is. He tangled in treetops again and again because the fog was as thick as a soda's white fizz and barely missed hitting a huge speeding plane. Just not getting lost needed all Santa's skill with street signs and numbers a more difficult still. Oh, my goodness, he couldn't read anything in that fog. He still made good speed with much twisting and turning as long as the street lamps and house lights were burning. At each house, first checking what people might live there, he'd quickly pick out the right presents to give there. Now, that's slowing Santa down, though, because he can't read everything that quickly. He's used to just popping in and putting his finger beside his nose and popping down that chimney. It's slowing him down. It's taking him a long time. He's not used to that. He's used to speed. So there he is in his sleigh that goes really, really light and fast. But lights will be out after midnight, he said, for even most parents have gone to bed. Because it might wake them, a match was denied him. Oh, my, how he wished for just one star to guide him. It says, through dark streets and houses, oh, Santa did poorly. He now picked the presents more slowly and less surely. He really was worried for what would he do if folks started waking before he was through. So now he was getting really worried because if mamas and daddies started waking, then the boys and girls would start waking up and then they would see him. Are you supposed to see Santa Claus? No. Uh-oh, he was getting a little worried. This is the page that I'm going to read you. Okay, this is the page that I'm going to show you. The night was still foggy and not was all clear when Santa arrived at the home of the deer. Onto the roof with the clouds all around it, he searched for the chimney and finally found it. The room he came down in a black in, in was blacker than ink. He went for a chair, but it turned out to be a sink. Oh no, that's not good. See, look, he's in the sink though. The first reindeer bedroom was so very black, he tripped on the rug and he burst open his pack. So dark that he had to move close to the bed and peek very hard at the deer sleeping in the deer's head. Before he could choose the right way, kind of toy, a doll for a girl or a train for a boy. Let's see what he saw. Uh-oh, I think he's going to get something. Look what he sees right here. This is the page I'm going to read you. This is the page I'm going to show you. But all this took time and filled Santa with gloom while feeling his way toward the next reindeer's room. The door he just opened when, to his surprise, a soft, glowing red color light met his eyes. Uh-oh, whose room's he in now? We know, don't we? <gasps> the lamp wasn't burning. The light came instead, and there lay, but wait now, what would you suppose the glowing, you guessed it, was Rudolph's red nose? So this room was easy. This one little light let Santa pick quickly the gifts that were right. So whose room was he in now? Yeah, Rudolph's. That little nose sticking up under the covers. <coughs> okay, there's the picture. Oh, look at Santa and look at Rudolph. They both look happy, don't they? How happy he was till he went out the door. The rest of the house was as black as before. So black that it made every step a dark mystery. And then came the greatest idea in all of history. He went back to Rudolph and started to shake him, of course very gently, in order to wake him. And Rudolph could hardly believe his own eyes. You can just imagine his joy and surprise at seeing who stood there a pause length away and told of the darkness and fog and delay, and Santa's great worry that children might waken before his complete Christmas trip had been taken. So look at there, they're talking. They're making a deal. What do you think Santa is asking Rudolph? I bet you know. I bet if you think of the song, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, you can tell us, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? I like that song. It's one of my favorites. Let's see here. And here we go. Here's the page I'm going to read, and this is the page I'm going to show you. 
And you, he told Rudolph, you may save the day yet. Your shining bright nose, son, can show us the way. I need you, young fellow, to help me tonight to lead all my dear to the rest of our flight. And Rudolph broke out in such a big grin, it almost connected his ears to his chin. Look there. What a grin. I've never seen such a grin. He scribbled a note to his folks in a hurry, and folks are his parents, said, Santa, meet me and my sleigh in the, on the lawn. You'd stick in the chimney, and flash, he was gone. So Rudolph pranced out through the door, very gay, that means happy, and took his proud place at the head of the sleigh. Now look at there, I want you to look who is leading that sleigh, the one that they all made fun of, the one who is the proudest and the best, the one who has the guiding light. That just shows you never make fun of anybody. They may have a special skill or a special knack for something that you don't know about. Okay, now look at there who is flying high now. Ooh, Rudolph. The rest of the night, well, what would you guess? Old Santa's idea was a brilliant success. And brilliant was almost no word for the way that Rudolph directed the deer on that sleigh. In spite of the fog, they flew quickly and low and made such a good use of the wonderful glow that shone out from Rudolph at each intersection. That means for um, cars and people come together. That shone out from Rudolph. Not even once did they lose their direction. So he had such a bright glow that they didn't lose where they were going not one time because his light was so, so bright. You know, boys and girls, you can be a bright light by being a leader in your classroom and by doing what your teacher tells you to and by knowing the rules. When you behave, other people behave too, especially here at Christmas time. All right, here's the page that I'm going to read to you. Here's the page I'm going to show to you. It says, At all of the houses and streets with sign on them, the sleigh flew real low so Rudolph could shine on them to tell all who lived there so Rudolph could know just to what to give whom. They'd stop by each window and peek in the room. Oh, Santa knew always which children were good and minded their parents and ate as they should. You need to eat good too, boys and girls. No ring pops for breakfast. All right, here's this picture. So Santa would pick out the gift that was right with Rudolph close by making just enough light. It all went so fast that before it was day, the very last present was given away. The very last stocking was filled to the top just as the sun was preparing to pop. And that means the sun was just popping up in the sky. So did they make it before the sun came up? They sure did. They made good time because Rudolph's light was so bright. Okay, this is the page that I'm gonna read. And this is the page that I'm going to show you while I'm reading. The sun woke the reindeer in Rudolph's hometown. They found the short message that he'd written down. He gathered out, they gathered outside to await his return, and they were surprised and excited to learn that Rudolph, the ugliest reindeer of all, Rudolph, the red-nosed, bashful, and small, the funny-faced fellow they always called names and practically never allowed to play games, was now to be envied by all far and near, for no greater honor can come to a deer than riding with Santa and guiding his sleigh, the number one job on the number one day. So should they ever, ever have been mean to Rudolph to begin with, boys and girls? Should they ever have been mean to him to begin with? Why, no. If you're never ugly, you never have to say that you're sorry. And, and the word envy means that they're jealous. You know, because, you know, if you do something really good, then they're going, man, I wish I was Rudolph. But um, they, they, they just really did something they shouldn't have done because he got the best job of all. He was like the top dog. He was the top deer. Okay, here's the page that I'm going to read, and here's the page that I'm going to show you. The sleigh and its reindeer soon came into view, and Rudolph still led them as downward they flew. Oh, my, was he proud as they came to a landing right where his handsomer playmates were standing. And handsomer means they were better looking, but I don't think they were better looking than Rudolph, okay? If I was a girl reindeer, I'd like Rudolph, okay? So now they were all looking at him like, man, wow, I wish I was Rudolph. Yeah, they're thinking, boy, I wish I hadn't called him names. I wish he'd be my friend. They should have been nice to begin with, shouldn't they? Mm-hmm.
they should have. Now, this is the page that I'm gonna read, and this is the page that I'm gonna show to you. The same deer who used to do nothing but tease him would now have done anything only to please him. They felt even sorrier that they had been bad when Santa said, Rudolph, I never have had a deer quite so brave or so brilliant as you as fighting black fog and steering me through. And brilliant means really, really, really smart. You, by last night's journey, was actually bossed. Without you, I'm certain that we would all have been lost. I hope you'll continue to keep us from grief, that means sorrow, on future dark trips as commander-in-chief. He's making him the head reindeer. While Rudolph just blushed, that means he just his cheeks turned red, from his head to his toes, till all of his fur was as red as his nose. He was embarrassed because he didn't mind. He liked doing things for Santa Claus. He enjoyed serving people. So he had a servant's heart. Look at Rudolph. He, I'm trying to show you. I'm not doing very good on my camera. There he is. He didn't mind. He enjoyed doing things for Santa Claus. See? He had a servant's heart. He was a good little deer. And that's the way you should be. You should always want to do things for people. Here's the page that I'm going to show you. Look how humble he is. Does he look proud or happy, or has he just got his little head down like, ah, shucks, it was nothing Santa Claus. The crowd clapped their paws, and they started to screech, hooray for Rudolph, and we want a speech. But Rudolph was still bashful, despite being a hero. But Rudolph said he was tired, and his sleep on the trip had totaled zero. So that's why his speech was quite short and not bright. Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> and to all a good night. And so Rudolph just ended up with Santa Claus there and all the other reindeer. And then what did Rudolph end up doing? He went to sleep. He was exhausted. Would you be exhausted if you had flown around the world and taken toys to all the boys and girls? Okay, and this is the very last page, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, that's why whenever it's foggy and gray, it's Rudolph's the red nose who guides Santa's sleigh. Be listening this Christmas and don't make a peep, because this Christmas, <clears throat> um, that late at night, children should be asleep. The very first sound that you'll hear on the roof, that is, if there's fog, will be Rudolph's small little hoof. And soon after that, if you're still as a mouse, you may hear a swish that flies around the house and shines enough light to give Santa a view of you and your room. And then when they're all through, you may hear them call as they drive out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Merry Christmas, I hope you enjoyed this book. And when this book is done, let's see if you can sing the song with your teacher. I bet you know the song. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, and they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, you'll go down in history. Merry Christmas.